So folks, tonight Donald Trump was finally taken down by multiple elements of law enforcement in a shocking maneuver that caught people off guard. And it is something that's quite difficult to understand on the surface. Hit the like and subscribe button as we track these complex moments. Because when you finally see what happened today, Donald Trump, as it's noted in one of the clips I'm going to show you, is trying to play a shell game where he's trying to delay and deny and obfuscate and change the topic of discussion each and every day. And, and frankly, if we're being honest, up until now, he's gotten away with it. But tonight, all of a sudden, he was taken down and thrown to the ground and he has nowhere to go. He is trapped. He is detained. He is contained. And you will understand how complicated all of this is when you watch the following. And it has everything to do with Trump, but also one of his buddies finally being apprehended today in epic, frankly, historic fashion. Watch every second of this. Don't you dare click away because you won't understand until you watch this and then we'll break it down after. Jack of 1917, espionage, me, espionage. Andrew Weissman, can you explain to Donald Trump why he was charged under the Espionage Act. So this is just a, such a perfect example of, of Donald Trump uh, playing sort of a shell game. Um, you know, he wasn't charged with murder and he wasn't charged with bank robbery. I mean, to sit there and say, I wasn't charged, you know, I'm being charged now with espionage. Well, no, he's not being charged with espionage in the sense of he's a spy. Um, the title of the statute that comprises lots of components is called the Espionage Act. One of the things that it criminalizes is if you improperly and knowingly and intentionally retain national defense information. That is part of the Espionage Act. You know, you can understand why that would be put in there, because a typical person who they were concerned about would be a spy who would get that information, but it's not required. By the way, this is really common in the criminal law, that you have a statute with a title, for instance, RICO, and someone says, how can you, how can you charge me with RICO? I'm not an organized crime figure. Um, I'm not part of the Italian mafia in New York. Well, it is true that the RICO statute's used for that, but that's not all it's used for. <laughs> So this, to me, is such a demeaning way of sort of pandering to his base with really no there there. Um, so that's that's my total assessment. Of, of well, now to, for a moment, steps out of Donald Trump's shadow and into a blistering legal spotlight. Trump's personal aide and now co-defendant pleaded not guilty to helping his boss, the former president, hide classified documents. But here's a twist. The arraignment comes after a judge unsealed more of the Mar-a-Lago search warrant affidavit, which reveals prosecutors have surveillance video showing someone moved dozens of boxes before that FBI search. I want to bring in both CNN's uh, Caitlin Polenz and CNN legal analyst Norm Eisen, who's a former counsel to the House Democrats during Trump's first impeachment. Caitlin, first to you. Uh, t tell us what uh, we learned in the courtroom today. Well, not a lot because mm. it was really a very short hearing, but it's an important hearing. Yeah. It's the hearing where Walt Nada finally, after a month, from the indictment of both him and Donald Trump, he gets to enter his not guilty plea. He himself showed up in court, and now they're off toward a trial where mm -hmm. he and Donald Trump are both linked as co-defendants. Yeah. They both want trials. Uh, we also know from our reporting that Trump's defense team is pretty clued in to what Walt Nada's defense team is, is doing as well. And so now they're on this path of when will the trial be? Will Donald Trump, as he loves to do in court, be able to drag this out? And at any point in time, does Walt Nada's interests diverge right. from Donald Trump? That's So to that point, Norm Eisen, could those interests diverge, there, thereby putting pressure on Nada to turn state's evidence, perhaps, against, uh, against the former president? Well, Jim, having defended... Uh, individuals for more than three decades, I would argue their interests already are divergent. Mm. Uh, Nauda is looking potentially at decades if convicted. Um, the normal thing to do with a uh, lower down person yeah. 
in this kind of a, an alleged criminal scheme is to, I would always tell my client, look, cut a deal, mm -hmm. cut a deal as early as you can to save yourself from that risk. Yeah. Nauta hasn't done that. So yes, that pressure will continue. And he, of course, doesn't have the you know, the, the conflict, if you want to call it that, of currently running for president. Now, it does not, uh, only the other de defendant does. In the midst of this, Caitlin, uh, we learn about surveillance video from Mar-a-Lago showing boxes being moved prior to the FBI search. They don't identify who that person is, but we have some indicators as to who it likely it's, is. <laughs> it's pretty clear it's Walt yeah. Nada because right. these details arise again in the indictment against him. Uh, and we know that this is the sort of thing prosecutors are going to be showing at trial, the video mm -hmm. that they would have of Nada moving these boxes, what prosecutors say was done at the direction of Donald Trump. But we get this new document yesterday, or more redacted, uh, redactions are lifted from the document. It was a document submitted to court before the FBI search last August. And actually, the surveillance footage was quite extensive. There were four different angles around the storage room so they mm -hmm. could see who was coming and going. They were watching this room. You could mm -hmm. see, they, they described people being seen. We know that there has been pressure on NADA to flip. That's right. um, how much do you think Jack Smith, the special counsel, is stepping up that pressure now to turn him? It's a really good question because we know that Nauta came in and was interviewed and lied the first time he talked to investigators. He later came back and admitted that he had uh, made false statements and, and he's actually been charged with some of those now. That's very damaging to his ability to testify for the government if he decides to flip. Yeah. So the government, if they use Nauta as a witness, would have to essentially rehabilitate him on the stand. The longer he plays that tangled game and uh, Curry's favor with Trump and, and is represented by lawyers who are paid for by the Trump organization, the more his value as a witness may be diminishing. So the clock is ticking for Nauta if he is going to choose to essentially switch sides and start helping the government. And we Special counsel Jack Smith pushes for this December trial for Donald Trump, arraigned just under a month ago, with his aide and co-defendant, Walt Nada, who you see right there, also facing this indictment on conspiracy, lying, and withholding classified documents. Now, that once obscure valet and body man is back in the news. Everyone saw him that day at Trump's arraignment. These are some shots where he's around Trump or in the background, but he didn't plead that day or the next week or even the week after that. No, Nada did not enter his plea because there's a Florida legal requirement in that district that you have local counsel. Indeed, the Wall Street Journal reports that Nada's search for a Florida lawyer had been beset by wariness of reputational damage from a high-profile case involving Trump. In other words, while he is legally presumed innocent and the burdens on the government, it is a public fact that even getting a lawyer is hard when you are this yoked to this person you work for, who's your co-conspirator under the indictment, your co-defendant. Now, the Florida lawyer he did find is a, quote, former public defender with limited experience in the federal courts, according to the New York Times. Indeed, if you check, there's a, a federal system for this, sort of the Google of courts. It's called PACER, and you can't find her name in PACER in that database. But the Times notes she has handled some local cases. Now, Nada was out dining with Trump as recently as Friday. You can see him there together. They were in Philadelphia. But this news tonight that Nada's finally gotten a lawyer so he can finally do step one, which is plead, and I'll get into that, speaks to the potential gap here between two people whose fates are intertwined. A gap in the very literal timing of these arraignments. It's taken three weeks, but also potentially a gap in the level of defense they have. It wasn't until today that we got this scene. Now to getting his own arraignment, this is him entering the courthouse, where the lawyer entered a not guilty plea, and those are the new sketches of that. And this hearing was even quicker than Trump's. It lasted about five minutes. When Nada left the courthouse, he declined to answer questions. That was the scene, a little shaky, understandably. That's the video we got of it to show you what happened. And again, one of the big questions here is whether Donald Trump is going to really help this individual. This isn't the first time he's had someone in his inner orbit get into legal trouble. And it doesn't look like, from what we can tell, that Trump's helping that much with even getting a lawyer. I mean, he got himself one in time, but 
Mr. Nada, again, it took weeks to even get what I just showed you, him walking out of court today. Now, Special Counsel Smith indicted Donald Trump for all of these issues, including espionage. And he indicted Nauda for conspiring with Trump. So everything that Nauda is accused of is, is basically for Trump's benefit. There isn't in the indictment or in the information we have right now any apparent benefit to Nauda himself. And as I mentioned, Trump aides have been in that position before. Michael Cohen pled guilty to an election crime that was for the election of Donald Trump or his campaign, not his own. He didn't run. The same incident there is now a part of Trump's other pending criminal trial in New York. So what I'm telling you tonight as we follow Nada's developments is that his entire case turns on Trump. Both men face the prospect of real prison time if they fight this to the end and lose. And today we got new details on how Nada acted with the unsealing of part of the original search warrant, which includes for the first time a step-by-step -step breakdown of what the cameras allegedly caught him doing. They show that he was caught basically making two trips to bring boxes out of his storage room, including 50 in one day, 11 more the next day, and then he returned with 25 to 30 boxes. And that is consistent with the timeline we've reported on for you based on the original indictment's evidence, where across from left to right over time, you see how they systematically and repeatedly, the two of them, allegedly misled the FBI, their own lawyers, and hid this material. Altogether, this is the kind of evidence that convinced the judge to authorize the first ever search of a former president's property. Now, why does that matter? Because many of those boxes clearly contained contraband. And just... Donald Trump has finally actually been taken down by federal law enforcement today. Forget his arraignment a couple weeks ago. That wasn't really it. Because what we've been seeing over the last couple weeks is that until Walty Boy went down, this process really couldn't start. We've seen that, right? Like Trump had his arraignment. And we were like, okay, like this is going to get going. But then it was like, well, no, because, you know, his co-conspirator, alleged at least his alleged accomplice, um, he needs a lawyer and he can't seem to find a lawyer. And oh, he missed his flight. And oh, we can't actually find it. We've talked about this. Uh, the folks at Midas have talked about this too, how he was basically quasi missing. But then also we saw photos of him at Trump's rallies and stuff and they couldn't get him in. They finally apprehended him today and dragged his sorry ass to Florida. And when they did that, that's when the law enforcement from a couple weeks ago actually took Donald Trump down. Now it all begins. And it's for two reasons. One, until everyone's been arraigned, the process of arresting Trump a couple weeks ago of taking him down really didn't happen. And more importantly than that, folks, it sets up this inflection point. All this new evidence coming out screws Trump, but it also is this last moment and the most dangerous one for Trump thus far, where Walt Nauta has got a choice to flip. Up until now, him flipping has been theoretical because it's like, oh, if you don't flip, we may charge you. But now he's been charged and arraigned. It's real for him. He probably does still have an 1159, you know, right before midnight chance to flip. But if he doesn't, he's screwed. Either way, Walt being taken down is Donald Trump being taken down tonight as well.